Good evening everyone and welcome to our Christmas Eve family service. We are hugely grateful to some of our young people who have helped to make this service possible as you will see very shortly. So let us begin our service. We have come together in the presence of God, our Father, to rejoice in the gift of Jesus, the light of the world. Tonight, we are ready for the coming of the Christ child into the world and into our lives. And we offer to God our thanks and praise. So let us join together as the family of God, wherever we are, to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe we have a newscast coming in. Good evening. I am Marcus of Jericho. And I am Rebecca of Bethlehem. Welcome to the Look Easterly Evening News. Tonight's top story is the census. Caesar Augustus has issued a decree that a census will take place of the entire Roman world. Everyone has to go to his hometown to register. Let's talk to one of our field reporters, Elizabeth of Judea. Elizabeth, where are you now? Good evening, Rebecca. I am in Bethlehem, talking to people that are trying to find rooms for the night. And it's chaos! Sir, sir, can you tell me if you found a room for the night or do you own a house here in the city? Actually, I own my own place just outside town. Uh, have you opened your house to any of the really desperate people arriving here in town? I would, but my whole extended family is here and we just don't have any room for anyone else. My wife and I are sleeping on the floor for the next few days. I must be going. I have to go to the market and stock up on some food before we run out. Those people will eat you out of house and home. Thank you, sir, for your time. Here's someone else. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me if you have offered shelter to anyone that has come into town tonight? What? I wouldn't let a mouse stay in my house, let alone any of those people. They expect you to feed them and their animals and give them a bed with clean linens. I'm not a hotel. Let me guess, you and your camera crew are looking for a place to stay too, right? Well, forget it. I only have a two-room house here in town. I don't have room for any of you people. Sir, no, we're not looking for any...
Thank you, Elizabeth. Everyone I've spoken to seems to have no room here either. Oh, there's a couple coming. Let's see if they have found a place. I excuse me, sir. It looks like you've been travelling for quite a while. Have you found a place to sleep for tonight? No, we haven't. My poor wife is almost ready to give birth and she needs to lie down. We have travelled quite a long distance from Nazareth and, well, this donkey is quite old and, and rather slow. No one would even help a pregnant lady? No, but we have one last inn to check. Otherwise, we'll be sleeping under the stars for tonight. I hope that doesn't happen. May God be with you. And also with you. May I help you? Sir, we need a room for the night. My wife is pregnant and she's about to give birth. Harold! You know that we're full up, don't you? I'm sorry, I don't have any rooms left. I would have given you my own bed, but I've already given that up. Did you hear me? Yes, dear, I heard you. Thank you, sir. We'll be on our way. Wait, there is one place that is left. It's not the nicest of places, but it's dry. And at least you're not out in the night air. Really? Where? It's a stable. Joseph, it's fine. I really need to rest. Are you sure, Mary? Yes, I'm sure. you going? I'm showing this couple the last one space that we have left. What? You know, the stable. But she's pregnant. That's no place for a person to sleep in, let alone to give birth. Madam, it's fine. I'm just really tired. I've packed some things to sleep on. Oh, Harold. Well, I do have some extra linens that I keep for emergencies. And do you know what else? I'm a midwife, just in case you need me. That is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you both for your generosity. May God be with you this night. Let me show you where it is.
That was a wonderful report. It's good to hear that even in busy and difficult times, there are still people who will share what they have, even if it's only a stable. And now we're going to join Aaron of Damascus on location outside Bethlehem. Aaron? Thank you, Rebecca. I am here in the hills of Bethlehem to talk to one of the shepherds about what this census means to them. Excuse me, sir. Have you been to your hometown to take part in the census? We, of course. What do you think of all the people that are flooding into the city? Phew, we're just glad to be up here in the hills out of the way. But with so many people coming and going to Bethlehem, even the quietest parts have had people and donkeys coming along them, and it upsets our sheep. I see. Will you be glad when the census is over? Well, yes, we could do without all these extra people. Peace and quiet is what we like, and so do our sheep. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you God tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people from that was born to you this day in the city of David, a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I can't believe it. I've never seen anything like this. There's an angel just appeared up there and he's, he's talking to these shepherds. Oh my, there's hundreds. There's a whole host of heavenly angels in the sky. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
Thank you, Aaron. I think our story has changed direction. This is much bigger than the census. We will find out more and be back with more news about the Saviour's birth. For those of you who are joining our broadcast, we are following a breaking story that is happening in Bethlehem tonight. Our reporter, Aaron of Damascus, was out in the fields talking to some of the shepherds and something miraculous has happened. Angels from heaven appeared in the sky, announcing the foretold birth of the Messiah. Marcus, when was the last time that you have actually seen an angel? This is groundbreaking news. It really is, Rebecca. But for a moment, let's go to our correspondent Haggai of Bethel. He's been looking at the scriptural aspect of this event. Haggai? Good evening. I've been doing some research on the prophecies in the scriptures about the Messiah, and I've found some extraordinary things. The prophet Micah says, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. That's pretty amazing. Did you find anything else in the scriptures that shows that this is the Messiah who was born tonight? Yes. The prophet Samuel gave this message from God to the famous King David of old. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And according to the census officials, the baby born to Mary tonight is descended from the house of David. Wow. Now, let's go back to Aaron and find out what is happening with the shepherds. Aaron? Well, we're still here with the shepherds on their way to Bethlehem. <clears throat> we are just entering the city now. <clears throat> they seem to have a plan. They are trying to find out where the Messiah is. Let's start asking everyone you see if they know of a baby being born tonight in a stable. Sir, so this may sound strange, but can you tell me if there's a couple with a newborn baby staying in your stable? Well, that's very funny that you ask. There is a couple staying across the street in their stable. The people who own that inn said that they were from Nazareth and the young lady was due a baby any time. Why do you want to know? Thank you, sir. That's really exciting news. You won't believe this, but we have been told by the angels that the Messiah would be born tonight. They said that we would find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. What? Come on, I'll take you to them. Let's hurry and see. Everyone, I think we've found the baby. Follow that innkeeper. I must see this. I've got to hurry, so I'll hand you back to the studio. Welcome back to the Look Easterly Evening News and we are going straight to our correspondent Elizabeth of Bethlehem. Good evening. I was here in Bethlehem reporting on the census when I received the breaking news. My fellow reporter Aaron was interviewing shepherds in the hills when angels appeared and told the shepherds that the long-awaited saviour was born in a stable in Bethlehem tonight. And according to our correspondent Haggai, the scriptures say the baby will be a descendant of David, like the couple that I spoke to earlier. I'm going back to that stable to see for myself right now. Can you believe what has happened tonight? Excuse me, Elizabeth. We're being told that our international correspondent, Abigail of Babylon, is on the line. Good evening. I am here with three magi or wise men who are coming towards Bethlehem from the east. Uh, excuse me, sirs, what brings you this way? We are following a bright star that appears to us and keeps moving forward. A new star that moves? That's incredible. What do you think it will lead you to? We hope to find the baby 
who mm -hmm. has been born king of the Jews. We have been studying the sacred writings, searching for God for many years. Because of this, God has decided to lead us by this star, which will show us the place where the Saviour is born. What are you going to do when you find the baby? We are going to worship him and give him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. That's amazing. Well, you heard it here first. We are here at stable where the Christ child was born. Marcus, Rebecca, it's the most incredible thing I have ever seen in my life. It is amazing what God can do, from creating all of us to sending his only son to be saviour of the whole world. I do wonder what God has in store for the Messiah. I expect his life will be a great one. There will be many palaces built for him. He will have a life of luxury for sure. I don't know about that, Marcus. Why would God let him be born in a stable with the animals standing by? Why do the shepherds know first? If he was supposed to have a life of luxury, wouldn't he have been born in a palace? Good question, Rebecca. I have a feeling this story is just beginning. But that's all we have time for. So thanks from all of us at the Look Easterly Evening News. Thank you for watching. Good night. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended 
from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. Once again, a huge thanks to Lizzie and Ted, to Valley and Reilly and Emily and their assistants and all who have helped to make this service and whose creativity and imagination have brought to life for us the amazing events of over 2000 years ago. As one of the newsreaders observed, this is just the beginning of the great story, a story that continues through us today. So as we come to the end of our Christmas Eve service, a Christmas blessing. May God our Father grant us the light of Christ that we may shine with his love, be prompt to serve and eager to follow in his steps, who is the true light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this Christmas tide and always. Amen. God shines in your heart. Praise to Christ our light. Christ is the light of the world. Praise to Christ our light. Go in the power of the Spirit to bring that light to others. Praise to Christ our light. And we wish you a very happy and blessed Christmas. Amen.